and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land, and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees, or in the herbs of the field, through all the land of Egypt. Since the very dawn of civilization, the locust has taken its toll of men's crops. From out of the sky have come the winged hordes that have devoured everything in their path, leaving behind them a trail of ruin and famine. The plague locust, commonly known as the grasshopper, appears in almost every country in the world, and Australia has had many visitations. Wheat crops, almost ready for the harvester, have disappeared overnight. Pastures have been eaten as bare as a city road and farmers have seen the fruits of their toil vanish before their eyes. Recently, the discovery of extensive egg beds on clay pan areas on both sides of the Murray River warned the Victorian Department of Agriculture that another outbreak could be expected in the following spring. These egg beds were surveyed and kept under close watch. Realizing that the state's best wheat crop for many years was threatened with destruction, the Department of Agriculture immediately began preparations to fight the coming plague. Laboratory tests on young hoppers brought by plane from northern Victoria proved the new insecticide, Gamexane, to be even more destructive than DDT. And it was found also that cheap diesel fuel oil was a suitable solvent for the Gamexane. In the meantime, spray tests carried out at the Plant Research Laboratory at Burnley had shown the concentrations necessary for effective covering while further tests made in the field in conjunction with the Royal Australian Air Force had demonstrated that aerial spraying could be particularly effective. Special spray bars were then designed and attached to a number of Beaufort bombers. Very limited quantities of Gamexane were available in Australia, but immediate steps were taken to obtain supplies from Britain, and a shipment of some 20 tonnes arrived in Melbourne just before the threatened outbreak materialised. The gamexane and fuel oil were mixed together in these huge vats at the munition works and then by rail, by road and by air, supplies were rushed to the threatened areas. It was recognised, however, that aerial spraying could be practicable only against severe and concentrated outbreaks, and that where only small areas were infested, hand spraying and poison baiting would be more economical. Hand spraying outfits and supplies of gamexane were made available for small areas of vegetable crops, and many hundreds of acres of vegetables were saved in this way. In the meantime, supplies of bran and poison material had been established at strategic centres throughout northern Victoria. Here, poison baits were mixed by machine and supplied to farmers for distribution throughout the infested crops. Crops such as this with the pest still in the hopper stage, could be treated by baiting. Results were spectacular, and millions of hoppers were destroyed by the poison bait. there were millions more to come, and the pests were rapidly reaching the flying stage. Quicker methods of control were necessary to prevent mass migration to the south. To the grower, the position seemed hopeless. Then went out a call for the planes.
special tanks with a capacity of 520 gallons were filled with the spray material and the Beauforts were soon on their way. In each case, a radio truck moved on to the threatened farm. Communication with the pilot was established and the ground crew set out the smoke signals which marked the section of crop to be dealt with at each run. Flying at a height of not more than 50 feet and using spray at the rate of four gallons an acre, the planes achieved a thorough coverage, evenly wetting the crops, the headlands and even the mallee scrub. Maintaining a ground speed of 160 miles an hour, the planes were able to spray thoroughly one acre every second and achieved a 90% kill of the locusts. Some 30,000 acres, heavily infested with locusts, were sprayed in this way. These modern methods used for the first time in Australia thinned out the plague and effectively prevented the locusts from migrating to the southern Mallee and the Wimmera, where wheat crops worth more than five million pounds were safely harvested. Science, once again, had conquered an age-old pest.